Graphs can tell a story, and we need to be able to read that story from the graph. But it's also very important that we read the story properly according to what the graph is telling us. So let's have a look at this little example I've got here. Say I've decided to draw a graph where I have plotted, I'm going on a walk, and I start at a starting point, and I plot the distance in meters that I am from my starting point against the time in minutes. And this is what my graph ends up looking like. Now, the very first thing which people often make a mistake about is when they look at a graph like this, they say, oh, look, it looks like a hill. She walked over a hill. But you have to be very careful with that because that's not, in fact, what this graph is saying. Let's read what this graph is telling us. What this graph tells us is right at the beginning, we're at the start. After a minute, we're there sort of roughly about 150 meters from the start. And then we carry on moving further and further away from the start point. So all this going up is telling us is that we are moving further and further away from the start point. And then round about here, we're 300 meters away from the start point. And then what happens? Well, we start coming back towards the start point because over here, we're now 200 meters from the starting point. And then over here, 100 meters from the starting point. And then over here, we're back at the starting point. So although this little thing looks like a hill, that's not what it's telling us. All it's telling us is we go further away from the starting point and then we come back to the starting point. So the picture of the walk that I take is that I work 300 meters away from the start point and then I walk 300 meters, the 300 meters back, to get, end up back at my starting point. So that's what I'm just giving you a little caution about. Don't be fooled into, ooh, what does this look like as a picture? Read it. Read what the graph is actually telling you and read. This is the distance from the start. So when I'm going here, I'm talking about how far I am from the start. And this is time. It tells me what time those things happen at. A few little um, words that are quite useful to have. We talk about the graph in this region where it's going up, right? Where a graph is going up, we use the terminology that it is increasing. So the graph is increasing. In other words, the distance that you are from the start is increasing. And in real terms, what does that mean? It means you're getting further and further away from the start. So the distance from the start is increasing. Uh, this region here, where you've got the graph coming down, that you can see quite clearly the graph is coming down, we give that the terminology decreasing. In other words, the distance from the start is decreasing. Distance from the start is getting less and less. In other words, we're getting closer back to the start. And then we also, we call a point like this point, the very top of the graph, we talk about that as the maximum value of the graph, right? That's the greatest distance I am from the start in this case. And of course, our minimum distance in this case, well, there are going to be two points where I'm at the minimum distance. And the minimum in this case ended up being exactly zero, right? Um, that was the, short, the smallest distance I was away from the start. So increasing, decreasing, maximum and minimum. Okay, graphs can also, we can read a bit more out of graphs. So let's go again with this, you know, people going on a walk. And we're looking at the distance from the start that they are against the time in minutes. And let's now, in this case, we've got two people, person A and person B. They've both gone for a walk, and I've drawn their um, story onto the graph, right? I have shown their distance from the start against time on the graph. So now we can start asking ourselves questions about this. So let's look at it first. How long did both of them walk for? Well, that we've got information. Well, we've only got information up until seven minutes, right? So they walked for 
seven minutes. How far did they walk in those seven minutes? Well, in those seven minutes, let's look where B ended up. B ended up at 800 meters. So B, her total was an 800 meter walk. What about A? Well, in those seven minutes, A only walked 500 meters. We can also, I mean, both of them, we, their walks are pretty boring, right? All they're doing is getting further and further away from the start. So they're just walking away from the start, right? Nothing like the previous graph. They're not walking back or anything like that. They don't stop. Nothing. They just keep on going, walking and walking straight away. Um, let's just have a look. What would it look like if they stopped? So let's say um, if we carried on mapping what happened to A and A had stopped at that point of 500 meters and didn't move on from there for a whole long time, well, can you see what would happen is that they would stay at exactly 500 meters like that, right? They would just keep on at exactly 500 meters. So you'd have a horizontal line and that would tell you they're basically standing still at that point, right? They're not going forward and they're not going back towards the start. All right. We could also try and see, well, I could ask you, who was walking faster, B or A? Well, hopefully you can see quite easily that because in those seven minutes, B walked a whole lot further than A, B must have been walking f faster. And this shows up nicely in the graph through the fact that the slope of this B graph is bigger than the slope of the A graph. So B went a further distance, right, in those seven minutes than A went in those seven minutes. So you could get that information out of the graph too. Um, you can read off all sorts of information from this graph. I can ask you how far had B worked in, walked in one minute. Well, then you would say, okay, I'm looking at B. That's the blue graph. In one, after one minute, I'm over here exactly on the graph. And what is the distance value then? Well, the distance value is 100 meters. So plenty of stuff you could read off. You could also, I could also have asked that question the other way around, right? I could have said to you, um, how long did it take a B to walk 100 meters? In which case you'd go and have a look, well, where is 100 meters on the graph? And come back down and read the time off as one. So there's plenty of information you can read off a graph.